Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the uh, ISTA membership virtual meeting. I will hand over to the ISTA president who will welcome you to this meeting. Thank you, Andreas. W welcome to everybody to the first virtual meeting, preparatory meeting for the OGM of ISTA. Um, I'd like to welcome the panelists. Do you see there on your screen, Andreas Weiss, Secretary General, Rita Zeccanelli um, from the Executive Committee. She will also give us a, a welcome from Italy. Stefano Conti from Assessiamenti from the uh, seed uh, industry in Italy will give a presentation for us. Myself and Akashavulu as Vice President who will also talk about membership. Other panelists will join us during the session this morning, uh, Florina and Ernest Allen and Lena from the Ecom to update us on different topics. So welcome to you all, um, members, laboratories, designated authorities and other organizations um, to the, this meeting. I'm just, uh, Andreas, I don't know if you can help with that, but I'm just trying to make the first slide uh, progress and uh, it doesn't want to move at the moment, but uh, if, if that's something we can just check about. Uh, it should work. Thank you, Olga. So the other organizations that ISTA works with, uh, ISF, OECD, UPOV and FAO, um, we all should have been there together in Italy, but due to the pandemic, we cannot. Maybe other people can more easily join us today. And we see from the numbers that we have at least 130 or more people jo join in this session. At this time, I would like to spare a thought for colleagues around the world still dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. Also to colleagues and families who have passed away since we last met. In particular, Tamara from the Nomenclature Committee, whose obituary is in the recent STI. So the plant health seminar, which was planned for today, has now been moved to 2021. We have already had the virtual rules session on the 19th of May, where we invited questions and comments. And later on, Ernest Allen from the ISTA Rules Committee uh, will present the proposals that were already discussed on the 19th. We've had good questions and answers and feedback from that session and the, and the questions and answers and the revised proposals are available on the ISTA website before Ernest's session later on this morning, my time or this evening or late evening other times in the world. There are no technical committee meetings or activity reports presented today but the technical committees are having virtual meetings and their activity reports will be summarized in the October edition of C STI, Seed Testing International. The required documents for the OGM discussions during the day and for also for you to make your decisions were available on the ISTA website two months ago. The meeting agenda um, as I outlined the presenters earlier, I'm, I'm just about to finish my welcome to you. And then I hand over to um, Andreas, who will be the moderator for the meeting. And he will introduce the different people in the sections. 
First, we have Rita Zeccanelli to, to give us a welcome from Italy, um, and uh, then Stefano Conti, activity report from Andreas Weiss. I will do the ecom activity report. Kashavulu will give us a proposal about the membership fees, and then we are hand over to update from Lena from the Seed Science and Technology Working Group. We go into the business part of today, which is the ISTA rules proposals from Ernest Allen. And Andreas will give us an overview of the voting process for the OGM. Then we'll come back to myself for closing remarks. We're aiming for two hours today. We hope everything goes to plan. And, and now I can hand back over to uh, Andreas. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve, for your introduction. Yeah, we are having this um, first virtual presentation of the um, OGM. It is uh, not the pure OGM. The pure OGM is um, actually the voting process by the delegates, and all delegates have received the voting delegate voting documents. The voting delegates received it, and I will give you at the end some more instructions on uh, how to proceed with the voting. Now I would like to um, hand over to Rita Sacchinelli. Rita, it's a shame that we cannot meet in. Verona, you know I like the city very much, and um, you as well. So um, please give us your welcome from Italy. So, yeah, that's my welcome. Yeah. So, dear colleague and friends, I'm honored to take the floor at the beginning of this very special meeting and I'm happy to have this opportunity. As you know, our plans were different, and today we should have all been together attending this meeting in person, and we should all uh, have been in my country, in Verona, and shake our hands and say hello face to face, discuss together, and at the end of the day, drink uh, uh, a glass of a uh, good Italian wine. A couple of years ago, my country decided to invite the ISTA community to take the ISTA meeting 2020 here in Italy, in Verona in particular. And at that, that time, the COVID-19 pandemic was so far from our minds and also from our lives. But uh, this situation unluckily occurred. And uh, I have to say that it was hard in my country, very hard in my country, as well as in other areas. Uh, of the world, of the world world. And uh, somehow it is still hard, even if it's going improving, going better, lucky. Nevertheless, we are here today together and we are able to take care of our association and uh, to go on with our, to run our business. And I think this is very important and very positive. Uh, if we want to see the positive side of this situation is that we are experiencing new, new ways and new tools to, and creating additional opportunities to discuss and, and uh, spend time together and uh, go on in our work. This will be useful in future, I'm sure. Now, I, want, I would like you to imagine you are here in Italy and I want to invite you to listen to the presentation of Dr. Stefano Conti. Dr. Conti is uh, representing Asso Sementi, which is an Italian association of both uh, seed producers and uh, breeders. Asso Sementi is the Italian representative both in, in uh, ISF and Euroseeds. And he will present an overview of the Italian seed sectors and of their relevant figures. Before giving the floor, uh, first to Andreas, then to Mr. Conti, I thank all of you for your attention and I want to strongly recommend you to come and visit my country. Italy remains a beautiful destination, even if, sadly, the ISTA meeting this year cannot take place here. And uh, you ne we never know. I hope that in future, my country will be again able to invite ISTA for a future meeting. So thank you for your attention. 
Thank you very much, Rita, for the nice words. And we all feel um, a little bit ashamed um, that we cannot come to Italy. That is not possible in the moment, but we have these new possibilities. And uh, that is also a possibility inside the voting area, because now not only people who um, are present at the ordinary general meeting can vote, but also other people who have read have got a registration by their governments as voting designated members. And these are 47 this year out of 59. So that is a very big, big number. Um, and we welcome all of you here in the virtual Perona. I hand over now to Stefano Conti from Associamenti, and he will give us an overview about the Italian seed sector. Stefano, please. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Stefano Conti uh, from Italian Sea Trade Association. We are really pleased and, pleased and honored to be invited. First of all, my thanks uh, to President uh, Steve Jones, uh, Secretary General, and Mr. Mr. Weiss, and of course, the, the whole Executive Committee of ISTA. Um, in the next 10, 15 minutes, I'll try to provide you uh, an overview of the seed activities in our country and in particular the activities our association does. Associamenti was born in 1946, uh, then we changed our denomination in 2009 uh, uh, in merging uh, AIS and Associame that were two different associations. And today we have about one, uh, 150 members uh, our section are split in our four are cereal industrial crops forages and vegetables uh, the numbers are uh, on the screen uh, plus an horizontal uh, we call horizontal section that is uh, uh, the breeder section uh, that covers of course the the matter of the breeding as announced before by Mrs. Zacchinelli, uh, Asso Sementi joins in ISF and uh, uh, Euroseeds, uh, today Euroseeds, uh, formerly ESA. Uh, our association, uh, the activities is uh, historically about consultancy, that is the third line. But uh, by decision of our board, uh, we're trying to strengthen the, the first two segments, uh, in particular, lobby and communication towards uh, uh, a, main a main target represented by authorities, stakeholders and public institutions. The topic of interest are, uh, are very, are a number, are, are many. We, we have just some example on the screen starting from biodiversity because of course the to us to our breeders the access to genetic resources still remains strategic going on to sea treatment because that is strategic too for the modern agriculture as well as traceability that is a uh, uh, necessary as an important requirement as a value in all supply chains uh moving on the right organic seed uh, organic seed that in italy in particular is a growing interesting market uh, but uh, uh, talking about seeds uh, it's also a challenge uh, and as well as an opportunity because the planning of production is not easy due to seed derogation mechanism that is enforced uh, still enforced today now of course phytosanitary matter phytosanitary that is, is a, is a well-known matter, uh, and uh, but today is uh, uh, heavily spread and heavily uh, heavily impacts uh, for uh, most part of seed production for most crops. Uh, and finally, research and innovation. That is strictly uh, we're talking, of course, of, of breeding in this case. Uh, that remains, of course, the the core and the heart of the seed progress. Uh, and uh, as you can imagine, the challenge today is focused on NBT's technology and the European debate. Next, please. No. 
Okay. Uh, for the previous arguments, uh, dealing with the institution uh, is, is uh, quite hard because uh, you can see the uh, agri, uh, agriculture ministry that present was almost everywhere. But for uh, most of, the, of, of these uh, arguments, uh, biodiversity and GMO, breeders' right, phytosanitary and so on, the matter is co-shared. And this is a really sometimes really uh, a challenge to 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 manage to manage there talking about key figures uh, uh, we have uh, uh, internal assessment estimation that the market uh, uh, should be split as follows uh, the most part uh, is covered by vegetable seeds uh, followed by cereal maize herbages uh, and uh, so on. This data is referred uh, to uh, internal estimation uh, uh, dated to 2016, if I remember well. But if we want to talk about the import and export, uh, the the games is becoming very hard because uh, try the interpretation of the statistical official data is really a challenge for us. Uh, but anyway, we. Uh, we see that uh, regarding the C eat point, uh, the, the deficit the, between import and export remains about uh, 85 to 100 million uh, euros. So we import uh, more than export. And regarding the, the figures are, are, are presented in uh, percentage uh, uh, data, of course, but uh, this data comes from the 2016 again, but uh, we believe that the value increased and today the, the percentage can be considered of, uh, the same. As regards the seed export, uh, uh, I, I can, I can, uh, I can uh, show you that, uh, for example, for forages uh, in the bottom uh, in orange, uh, uh, the market value is approximately from 80 100 to 100, uh, uh, sorry, from 80 to 100 million euros covered by forages. And uh, also the, the sugar beet steers remain uh, strategic for uh, export. Uh, we're talking about 40 to 50 million euros. Oh, I, I think. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. But, my, my presentation uh, uh, disappeared. So, Andreas, um, yeah, I think they're just going to reset it for you, Stefano. Okay, no problem. Uh, Olga, could you make me the presenter? I think Stefano is our presenter and he has not got his uh, presentation ready. Uh, I can see only myself. So, Stefano, at the moment, uh, they're seeing, uh, we're seeing your screen uh, from your computer. Just a second. So, it's being reset now. Okay, okay, here it comes. Perfect. Can I go on with this? No. Yes. Okay. Okay. I can see that. Okay. Well, uh, the next slide is uh, about seed production and the data. The data. Our data talk about uh, over two hundred and thirty thousand hectares multiplied. Most of them are about agriculture with fifteen farmers and the rest uh, of 15,000 uh, uh, according to vegetable seeds and in total we are talking about uh, 20,000 farmers very I can see very highly skilled and uh, with high local investment in place. Uh, talking about the seed production we uh, again the we we, we believe the, the genetics are active uh, 
uh, almost 300 uh, seed companies, uh, mainly small, medium companies. Of course, we have multinational companies uh, and also super small companies, but the most part is represented by small, medium companies. Uh, on the right, the uh, our estimation of the share about 220 and 80 as regards the vegetable seed. Uh, this data come from uh, uh, the CREA DC, that's our uh, seed certification official body in Italy. So um, let's uh, show how the uh, what's the trend of seed acti activity in uh, in Italy uh, from the 1999 to today, of course. Uh, we see that the the most important uh, uh, crop is the durum wheat. Uh, that is managed by 140 seed companies, followed by another cereals, wheat and barley, then uh, lucerne, alfalfa, Egyptian clover, and so on. In, in all cases, uh, we see a, a decrease of the number of seed companies. I believe that in 1999, there were about uh, 350, but uh, we so this process uh, is uh, in the same way that in other countries. The seed production, uh, talking about seed production, the 2018, uh, the latest data I have uh, found, uh, showed that the most, talking about cereal, the most important uh, crop is durum wheat. The, the multiplied act is about 60,000. Uh, a particular note for rice uh, that uh, is an excellence for our country and our seed company supplies seed uh, throughout the whole Europe market. As we got the forage, as I said before, Lucerne is uh, a, as the first uh, place, followed by another uh, uh, leguminose crop, Egyptian clover and then some uh, pulses, bean, uh, and so on. As regards industrial crops, a uh, special mention for soybean that uh, due today is uh, soybean still uh, strategic uh, in the uh, political agriculture reform uh, because it, it, the, the soybean is a greening compliant uh, uh, crop, uh, so the seed, uh, uh, the seed is highly requested. Uh, followed by maize, sugar beet, uh, as I said before, still important the strategy for our country, and uh, then some flour. This data uh, talks about instead the the, the cultivation. The come, this data comes from the uh, the ISTAT national statistical data. Uh, apologies, I have no data for 2019 because the, the, the data stops, uh, the complete data are, are covered just until 2018. The first uh, crop uh, still remains during wheat uh, with over one, with almost 100, uh, 1.3 million hectares cultivated, as you can see, most, most part in the in the southern Italy, uh, where the hills are unfortunately very, very low, and the climate uh, uh, is, uh, uh, the temperature is uh, uh, quite high. Uh, the second crop is a common wheat uh, in our, uh, in the northern region. Uh, we are uh, talking from Bologna, Verona is here, as, so we are talking about the, the northern Italy. And the barley that is shared and, and is diffused among all the Italian country. Uh, the rice, uh, the rice uh, is still strategic, uh, strategic, strategic crop. Uh, indeed, not not so spread. Only 220,000 hectares, as you can see, only in irrigated areas of north or west of Italy. And finally, uh, a quite marginal crop, the oats, uh, mainly in southern of Italy. Uh, back to Lucerne. Lucerne is actually the third uh, cultivated crop in Italy. We have about 700,000 uh, hectares. Uh, diffused in particular uh, uh, in the 
north and the uh, center of Italy. Ryegrass and the field bean still remains a little bit little marginal uh, compared to uh, Lucerne. And industrial crops uh, with maize that actually still remains the second cultivated crop in uh, in Italy, with almost one million hectares, the, unfortunately, the maize cultivation dropped very much in the last 10-15 uh, years. And with the same urials, the soybean, as I said before, uh, has uh, had a, a, a quite uh, success in the last uh, latest four or five years. And we close with sunflower. We end with sunflower and the in, in particular and uh, in the medium in the center of Italy and which uh, uh, acreage still remains stable at 100,000. As regards seed production, uh, we now a little overview about uh, uh, vegetable. This uh, data comes from internal sementi uh, inquiry survey. Uh, apart the coriander that raises up to 5,000 hectares, but we consider as an aromatic, so it's kind of borderline crop, but uh, is still very, very important. Uh, in the graph below, you can see uh, the, the the share of the main vegetable seed uh, multiplication actors. Uh, split between open pollinated and hybrid. This is this survey is conducted annually by our association. So we can see onion followed by sicory and uh, radish, cabbage, pea, of course, car, carrot, very important, and so on. Uh, still working, still uh, sorry, talking about the seed production for vegetable. Emilia-Romagna region, that is our region, still remains a uh, uh, very, very strategic, important, as I said before, due to highly and skilled uh, and specialized uh, farmers, uh, followed by market that is just under Emilia-Romagna and Puglia, that is in the uh, far south of Italy. The final two slides is about a very recent survey that I conducted uh, in Italy in general that talks about the ISTA uh, certification, number of certification, uh, sorry, certificates uh, issued in the latest uh, three campaigns. Um, the data come from uh, uh, two public laboratories, three private laboratories, and unfortunately, nothing from a laboratory that is uh, is working with uh, uh, forestry trees, because at the moment it seems it is not issued any certificate about uh, forest trees. Anyway, uh, during the latest three campaigns, you can see the vegetable still remains the most important species. Uh, in the 2016-17, the total number of uh, uh, certificates issued is about uh, 4,100. Uh, the following here in the middle, uh, over 5,200, and the latest 2018-19, uh, about still about 5,000. Uh, as you can see, the the, the vegetable in in, any, in all cases uh, still remains the most important, followed by cereals and uh, uh, small legumes. The final slide uh, is about a foc uh, special focus on the number of uh, issue certificates for main crops in the latest campaign, so 2018 and 19. So I've been asked to, to show the most important, this is my exercise. It seems for vegetable, it seems for vegetable, the, uh, the beans, onions, tomato, carrot, and lettuce are the most important uh, uh, tested seeds, followed by cereals, again with maize, wheat and rice, and so on with the sun, oil seeds, sunflower, rape, uh, that is quite marginal, sinape, 
sesam, sorry, uh, grasses, uh, small legumes, uh, and also flowers too, uh, and uh, fodder beet and other species included mixes. So I think this data could be interesting for you. I have personally not, not enough information to, <laughs> to comment this data, but uh, hope you'll uh, like our uh, little exercise. With this, I have, uh, I, I'm, I think I'm finished. Again, thank you very much for the kind invitation and I remain at your disposal with us as a for any question. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Stefano. That was a very nice presentation. I saw part of it um, in Milan at the OECD seed schemes meeting, but the ones for the certificates, I think that was new. And uh, very thank you very much that um, uh, we could uh, uh, have that data from your side. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you too. Goodbye. Goodbye, thank you, Stefan. Now let's um, we continue now with the activity report. And share screen, right? Yeah. Okay. Andreas, your microphone is a little bit high on your head, maybe. That's well possible. Now it's seen. Good. So you can see my screen now? Yes, it's good, Andreas. So you see the presentation. We had to quickly change because we have to organize a few things over here. Um, yeah, I would like to give you the overview of the Secretary General. This presentation was actually produced together with Florina Palada, head of accreditation and technical department. Unfortunately, Florina uh, can join the meeting, but not as a panelist. We are a little limited here. Um, all the information uh, you see are provided also in the background documents, which you can find um, here in this area and on the ISTA website. What I would like to tell you about is uh, the ISTA Secretariat, ISTA membership, uh, the accreditation program, that is data provided by Florina. Uh, there is the training and educational program, publication of uh, publications and products, uh, that's the sales figures there. Highlights and achievements, which I will make a little bit shorter than, than usual uh, because of the time and the ISTA finances, which are of course affected by the COVID-19 situation. The Secretariat um, staff is uh, listed up here, and you uh, will find it as well in the annual report. Uh, at the end of last year, Christine Herzog, who was working as a system auditor for us, made herself self-employed and uh, um, still stays connected to the ISTA Secretariat. She's working as a contractor system auditor uh, and also for some special projects for uh, ISTA. Another change is that after her maternity leave, Fabiola um, decided that she would uh, stop working and uh, she is now taking care about her little son. So she was inside the staff until April 2020. New in the secretariat is Karen De La Rosa, also in the area of marketing and communication. She worked with us since November as an intern and um, uh, since uh, April, May, she started as an assistant. So we had a seamless process in this area to cover um, this 
very important task for us. On the membership side, you see that the membership is uh, growing. We have... Um, and Andreas, uh, Steve here, I, I'm not seeing progress of the slides on the screen. I'm still on slide one. That is funny. Can you see the screen now? I can see that you're on Easter membership slide with uh, Asia yeah. Pacific. Okay, then I then I go back one slide and show you also the picture of um, Karen. Um, so you don't miss that one. And then the membership area, I think now everything is fine. You see yep, the good. membership slide now. Yeah, okay. Um, we have an, had at the end of the year 235 member laboratories, which is an increasing number over the years. Um, and we have a pretty stable number in the area of uh, associate and personal members, which are now 30, 63 associate and 37 personal members. We welcome actually on board a new distinct economy, which is the Republic of Kosovo. On the accreditation side, in 2019, we had 142 accredited laboratories. In that year, we did 51 audits, 33 of them by ISTA Secretariat System Auditors. That will be a number which will be smaller in the next year. And 18 contracted system auditors. We had 46 reaccreditation audits and five uh, accreditation audits. For 2020, we planned 47 audits in total. Six audits were performed in January and February, and the others are postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic situation. We hope to catch up with a number of them. Now travel is uh, going to be open at least in Europe. Um, so we were asked as well, do we see that we can do all the audits of 2020 and 2021? That is an answer I cannot give you because um, I'm just secretary general of the organization and uh, not a profit. Um, I think we will be managed to do it and we will do everything possible to catch up with the situation. Um, from these 47, we have uh, 46 reaccreditation and one accreditation audit and we have possible three new accreditation candidates and they came actually in the last uh, six to eight weeks um, when the crisis uh, was hitting us so we are very confident that um, ISTA is very um, seen very important and that laboratories even see in a quite critical situation that they want to get accreditation of ISTA. That is not only thinking ahead, that is also thinking of food security. If you look at the number of laboratories accredited over the years, and here you have the last 17 years, 17, 18 years, you see that's a continuous growth, um, starting in 2002 with 83 and now being up to 142. That's the first time we were above 140 at the end of a year. The auditors, the regional distribution um, in 2019, uh, you can see here the number of contracted auditors um, that uh, come from active auditors from North America and uh, Europe mainly, but we are also very, very happy and proud to have an auditor now in Africa and Kenya. Uh, that is a very important achievement from us. And we are having auditors and training also in North America, Europe, but also now from New Zealand. And uh, we want to have a bigger spread of our auditors so that we can uh, have staff 
and auditors who are experienced all over the world. And that is not only to look at travel cost, but also to look at cultures and other things in the world. The feedback for the audits of 2019 of the 51 audits I talked about um, was um, the following. We received feedback of 44. Uh, excellent and very good in rating were most of them, more than 95%. Um, one rating was 2.3% satisfactory and uh, we had one unsatisfactory and we are working uh, on the corrective actions for that. We want to achieve 0% uh, unsatisfactory and that is why we need to take that very seriously and go into this um, situation. What was also done and started by Christine and also um, in the completion with Christine uh, after her leave of Istan was the interactive certificate tool. That is a learning tool which we will be able to supply to you within the next two to three weeks. Uh, it was a project which was also supported by Branca and by Florina. And I thank all three of them uh, very much for their support. Um, all, a lot of other um, ISTA uh, secretariat members were also included here. Uh, in a few cases, as you will have going with the certificate, also an explanatory video, which was also prepared together with our marketing and communication ladies. Also, also thanks to Joanna and to Karen. Training and educational program. We had um, four workshops last year. We wanted to have eight or even more this year, but um, all of them until now are postponed and we hope to get at least one or two at the end of the year, um, which would be very helpful uh, because we want to work in this area very hard. Uh, I think Steve will a little later on also explain to you about the situation in a training working group, a sub working group of the TCOM working group, where we are looking also now into new technologies and uh, for training and I think that is uh, something which we uh, are taking very very seriously. Concerning publications and sales, uh, we look at seed science and technology and you know from 2018, beginning of 2018, we um, did not sell print copies anymore, it was an open access online forum um, most uh, earnings we received were in 2018 from sales of uh, previous issues or previous chapters. And the uh, publication fee um, that is uh, mentioned in the bottom here, open access full length papers, we had in 18 and last year 11, and uh, free research notes we had last year 11 uh, and the year before also 11. Um, these payments are only by non-members, so if non-members publish at SST, they will have to pay for these publications. So last year we had a little bit less income, but that's what we want. We'll see also in uh, our budget. The total sales of publications, that is something which went up. We had um, um, very low sales in the last two years, um, below 100. We caught up last year with 140. That is mainly due to the new seedling evaluation handbook, which you can see here, 54 uh, copies were sold last year on that. Um, you always have to bear in mind that all members of ISTA, all member laboratories get free copies of these handbooks. And that was the first handbook we only published electronically and we will continue to do so with the next upcoming one, uh, which may be the uh, flower seed or sampling. One of them, they're all short before uh, the date of publication. Sales of um, yeah, certificates, that was a number which was going down. We had 2017 and 2018 very high numbers, above 200,000 in total. And uh, 2019, it was 175,000. We are still very good here. Um, 
and uh, that is giving us the, the um, estimation that in 2020 we also sell around 200,000 certificates. Um, I will later tell a little bit about the ongoing project of um, the electronic certificates. Coming up here, highlights and achievements. I would like to concentrate on two to three points here. Uh, point one, actually, as, um, as an achievement, is that we have uh, had Office 365, which enabled the Secretariat. We introduced it last year, end of last year, mid end of last year. Uh, enabled the Secretariat to work remotely, also during the pandemic situation. Uh, which is getting a little bit better now in Switzerland. We will be able to move to the office partly again. Um, but it also opened us the opportunity to have a tool for communication and exchange of documents and working together on documents and chats and all other things for all TCOMs and the executive committee. Um, some technical committees are working with it by now. Others, uh, the, the chairs are testing it out, but I'm pretty sure that during the next months it will be rolled out inside all technical committees. We have another project, which are the electronic certificates. And you see here also the project of a new website CMS. Uh, that is uh, a new uh, version of our website which will enable us to be a little bit more modern, that you can see the website better on new devices, on handheld devices, on everything, but also will um, lead to the possibility to have some changes. And we need to do this project as well, because we want to have our electronic certificates also via this uh, new website, CMS. So what we will do there, we will are looking into the possibility, and um, it's more than looking if you approve the budget, then uh, we will start the project immediately. The first uh, discussions um, with our providers um, have been done. Um, we had a feasibility study that is available and we are aware of the costing. It is not as high as the uh, EFITO certificates from IPPC, where the costs are um, about $1 million and um, that is not the, only the implementation, but also the maintenance cost over the year. We will be running at a, at a lower cost. Uh, we asked a few um, members about their duplicates, so we have an idea about the numbers of original certificates which might be issued, and uh, we'll calculate from that also um, a return on investment of this uh, investment. Because together with the CMS, the electronic certificates will be probably up to 550,000 Swiss francs. We are also working there on a data transfer via Excel. And that means that you can fill more than one certificate at a time, just from your limbs to the certificates. We will update you on the process. And um, we are all looking forward to this uh, very interesting and uh, more than one discipline uh, project. Start of the project, as I said, is as soon as we have the budget okay from your side. Oh. You can still see my screen, right? Yep, uh, you're on highlights and achievements. I should be on finances now. Now, yes. Yes. Yeah. Too many bottoms. And if you are organizer and presenter, it's a little bit complicated. Is the finances? I would like to give you the overview about 2019 and our proposed budget 2020 and the outlook for 2021. Um, just a word before, the proposed budget 2020 is a budget which was approved by the ECOM in February when we did not foresee that um, things like we are facing now happened. So it is uh, still the same thing which we have here and um, 
yeah, we hope that we can um, catch up with some lines, but we will probably not catch up with all the lines in the income, but we will also not be uh, with all uh, expenditures as they are here in the budget. You see that the annual subscription fee is a fee which is pretty stable with us. We are around 1.2 million. Uh, it's a little bit less this year um, than uh, in 2019, at least what we budgeted, but we expect that uh, we will get um, a little bit more members coming in here. Uh, we have the, and that is also mainly due to the calculation of the 10% discount, which we, we have. Um, that means if we budgeted the same amount, uh, which we have in 2020 proposed in 2019, uh, we check with around 70% of the people using this 10% discount, but that it seems that in 2019, uh, there were some payments received a little bit later. That's why the income in 2019 was a little bit higher. Accreditation subscription is pretty stable, uh, stable stream. Annual meeting, we only had 2019, um, 217,000 as an income. Uh, that was uh, mainly that we didn't have that much uh, registrants over the whole time for the meeting in Hyderabad. Uh, the costs were very high. Uh, so we made a tremendous loss on this annual meeting, um, but that's something we could take from the reserves. The point is that the meeting was an excellent meeting, very good prepared, very good uh, done, very scientifically sound. And uh, I think it was an important meeting also for the area. Uh, we are growing in Asia and it was very important to have that meeting even if the cost were pretty high and much higher than expected. Proposed for 2020, that would be the meeting which we now have actually, or should have had in, in Verona, was 142. Um, with all the prepayments we had to do before COVID struck us, um, we are in the moment with uh, uh, in the area of 40 to 45,000 Swiss francs, which we have paid. Um, and you will say later that uh, we budgeted uh, 30,000 more than um, we had in the income stream. So uh, we only have uh, 10,000 to 15,000 more, which we uh, had to take out of the normal budget. Uh, for this situation, very good, I think. Um, the point here is that, we, of course, we will try to get some money back, but it will be very difficult uh, probably from hotels and other organizations who could not deliver the service uh, because we don't know if when they are able to deliver, if they can pay or if they are bankrupt and have other owners. Um, technical committee income uh, will probably also on workshops will also not be materializing this year. So that will be an income stream which will not be coming in. Uh, sorry. I have to go down. So um, on the service centers is the rules. We expect the sales, which is pretty stable, around 50,000 this year. Uh, accreditation audits, um, we expect 630,000 to come in. There was a, a question previously, which I received is, uh, do we pay back if the audits did not take place? So I have to say a few words to that. Um, in the moment, we don't know the situation when we will do the audits. Uh, please note that you are, all the accredited laboratories are not paying in advance anymore. Uh, previously, you paid 13,000 for the audit to come. Now, there are three installments of 4,330 Swiss francs, which are coming later in the uh, after the audit had taken place. So we will see 2023 if there are uh, uh, some labs which would have paid more and how to deal with this situation. Proficiency tests, income, including the GMO, 12,000. That is something which uh, could be still in that area. Uh, QA workshop will also not materialize because we might not have one. That also means always on the other side, like with the other workshops, that we don't have expenses in the area, of course. 
see science and technology, we believe that we can get up to an income stream of 30,000 again, uh, having more pay full papers from uh, the outside. That's um, a challenge for the editors of the journal. Uh, technical publications and calibration uh, samples, uh, 25,000. Um, you see that's a pretty stable income which we have here. Um, certificates, 617,000. You saw that we had little less, but if we calculate with around 200,000, we get about 617,000 as an income stream in here. It is still the same budgeted for next year, but we don't know yet when the, if that will materialize uh, due to the point that we will have uh, probably some electronic certificates at that time. Income in that case uh, is a total of 290, 2.9 million. And I will show you the expenditures. There are the direct costs meeting and Congress. Uh, as I said last year, the costs were around 200,000 higher than uh, the income stream. Um, the value proposed for this year was 176, and you saw that this 30,000 I talked before. Um, the less income which we budget is mainly going back to the point that we have some free participants like the TCOM chairs and the executive committee and some invited uh, guests, uh, which we do not want to put on the back of the people who register. And that would be unfair because it's, um, it's an is the benefit to the, for their work, which uh, the people get to have free participation, and that should be paid by ISTA and not by the other participants. Executive committee and president, last year we had around 60,000 um, expenses here. Uh, we budgeted for that inside a special project, and the special project was also was the meeting of the uh, TCOM chairs and vice chairs together with the executive committee beginning of 2019 in Freising. Um, we budgeted the normal way of around 25,000 for this year, uh, which partly materialized by now because uh, that was the Bologna meeting of the ECOM in February. The technical committees, including the 3000 uh, uh, Swiss rank grant, uh, was last year 180,000. Uh, that is including, of course, the Seed Health Pest List project, which is a special project, and uh, uh, another project um on uh, the wild species um proposed for this year 96000 uh, all the other projects are inside the special project funding which i will be coming later up to um sea testing international uh, we had uh, payments of 41000 last year that was especially the second issue which was a little bit bigger and uh, therefore a little bit more expensive in shipment. Uh, this year we expect to be in the normal area of around 30,000 Swiss francs. The ISTA rules had an uh, uh, expenditure of 13 to 14,000 uh, Swiss francs last year. We expect it a little bit higher this year for 22. That was at least the budget. Uh, accreditation audits, um, there's a um, stable situation between 2018 and 19 and it increase for 2020 that is due to the travel cost which uh, will increase uh, due to the fact that uh, we changed our travel policies proficiency test including gmo um, also normally quite a stable thing uh, and always related to the income stream on the other side qa workshop is the same um, pretty stable but related to the income stream. So this year we don't expect to pay a lot here, uh, but also have no income on the other side. Seed science and technology, we expect to be around 55,000 like we were in the last years. Technical publications and calibration samples, we uh, expect to be at 22,000 because we needed to buy some new uh, calibration samples. Certificates, um, uh, 
payments uh, about 65,000. That could be a little bit more because we were hit by uh, a lot of requests just recently and we bought new certificates in the area of 200,000 oranges. So that could go a little bit up, but we will be catched up by a higher income on the other side. Provisions for fluctuation. Last year, we used 150,000 of the reserves. That was mainly going back to the point that we had um, higher cost, uh, higher cost in the area of the Congress, more than expected. But also, we wanted to take out 165,000 uh, out of the uh, reserves for the 100,000K project. Uh, which is also inside this uh, technical committee and workshops at 3,000 grants. grants. Uh, so um, uh, that partly materialized as well last year. And as, uh, with the three projects which are running, I think you get an explanation a little later. And this year we plan to take out 850,000 and I will explain uh, the special projects in a minute to you. Uh, salaries are um, in the moment pretty pretty stable for us. They are are going up because we will have a new still have a free position for a system auditor to uh, to fill, and that is something where we need to see that uh, that is done as soon as possible, or we have to find solutions for that. Other areas are pretty stable, which I have showed you here and within the budget frames. Further operational cost, office costs, uh, we expected to have higher office costs here because the increase of uh, rental fees, which would not materialize in 2020, um, but it may at a certain stage at 2021. And that doesn't mean that it is um, that high then, but uh, that is uh, just a, a forecast from our side. Uh, we're working on a project to reduce these uh, office costs also if you would move to a different location. Travel costs also uh, pretty stable in 2019. Uh, we expect an increase for 2020 and 2021. Uh, that is also to more travel uh, and more um, congresses and, and other meetings to be visited. Marketing cost. Uh, last year were pretty low. We budgeted also 25, you see 26 in here, but that includes another project which the ECOM approved. That is a project of a PhD student in Angers. Um, she's working on 100 years of VISTA uh, as a history student, and we will get uh, some more information in one of the next issues of SDI to all of your members. Uh, they might contact you as well, uh, she might contact you as well, and um, she was introduced in uh, newsletters, and uh, you know about this project probably. Um, this uh, money comes out of the special project fund, which um, you will see below. And um, we budget marketing costs of around 25,000. Uh, website, um, we had uh, low costs last year but one will probably have increased costs to maintain the website and this year we budgeted around 40,000 we will need to see how that will materialize uh, other other special projects we have this year 889,000 inside that are 550,000 for the certificate for the electronic certificate and the adaptation of the website for this purpose um, we have around 200,000 from the, or 150,000 from the 100,000 um, program for the, uh, for the um, uh, special projects. Um, that are cost which were not materialized last year by the running projects and the new projects which are now coming up. We have uh, still costs for the CTELS test list, which was prolonged by the ECOM. We have the um, 100 years ISTA project. Uh, we have a number of other projects which we are finalizing out of this, uh, this budget. Um, in, if you go back, if you would go back, we have 850 or 50,000, which we take for this out of the reserves. That means 
that we will have um, around 40,000, which we can take out of the running budget. This is a little bit different for next year, and that is why we um, need to have ideas about uh, finances. We have to have an eye on that. We will uh, budgeting 180,000 in the moment proposed. It will be probably more uh, for the projects, but um, we um, have only 150, which we uh, take out of the reserves. So that uh, is um, higher. So we have more projects than we than we can take out of the reserves. There is another point which I would like you to do attention attention to is the budget 2019, uh, where we had uh, inside the financial cost 160,000 financial costs, and in addition 50,000 or 55,000 financial income. That is related to the point that during the year. We were facing the problem that um, our reserves, which are in the moment 4.6 million, uh, 4.6 million, 10,000 actually, um, that these reserves uh, had to be reshifted. And um, because we were facing the situation, like a lot of others, that we were asked to pay negative interest for all our Swiss. Uh, franc accounts and euro accounts so um, what we did we kept the minimum on these accounts and uh, used uh, some of the area to go into um, uh, fill up our dollar accounts and go into uh, the um, possibility of uh, fixed assets um, but these fixed assets were mainly in us dollars and the US dollar dropped like the Swiss franc at the end, uh, like the euro at the end of the year. So what we had a foreign, uh, foreign currency exchange uh, loss here of about 100,000. In the end, we didn't pay around 30,000 negative interest, but also get 55,000 out of it. And uh, so in the end, it is um, uh, on the paper marked a real loss. Uh, it's an, an equal. And if the um, that's for just for bookkeeping purpose. And if the exchange rate would change again into the other direction, which is which it is doing in the moment, end of the year, we probably have a correction here of the foreign exchange, which is in a positive way. That's what we are um, we are hoping for, and uh, we are looking to. Um, that is um, what I can tell you in the moment. So we have. Uh, at, uh, um, um, Positive result last year of 7,000 and expect this year 1,800 Swiss francs. Um, if you have any questions, you can send it to me or you can send it via the chat box. I would have to look at it. Uh, and um, what we had as well are the audit at the beginning of the year by BDO, our financial auditors, and they proved our financial closing for 2019. That was uh, very positive for us. And uh, the ECO would suggest to stay with BDO as financial auditors also for 2020. You will find that in your voting document. I thank you very much for your uh, time and appreciate everything and um, I wish you all the best and stay healthy and uh, we all hope to see you in Cairo in 2021. Thank you Andreas. Okay, we have a few questions um, from Smili Kapoor. I think if you send us these questions because they belong to an accreditation or, or small scale testing business, if you send that to us uh, via ista.office at ista.ch, then uh, well, you will get the, the answers. I don't see any further questions in the chat box. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I hand over to you, Steve. 
and I try to give you the rights also to move the mouse. I hope that works. Thank you, Andreas, for the overview and the activity reports and, and the details of the ISTA budget. Is there another question coming in? No. Um, yes, yeah, Steve, you want to continue? Thank you. Um, at the moment, I'm just making sure if my mouse will work uh, to advance the slides. Yep, that's working now. Thank you, Andreas. So um, we're, we're running um, to a tight schedule, so I'll try and quickly go through the PowerPoint so that we can get to um, the, the other speakers in, in good time and also allow Ernest enough time to take us through the rules proposals. So in my presentation, which is uh, also available in the preparatory area for the events, so if, if I go over anything too quickly, you can always go back to that and, and look at that later. So I'm going to give you an overview of the Ecom membership, what ISTA does. So Andreas, I've just lost uh, the screen now. Um, it seems to have gone to... Um, your, your emails, is that possible that you know that is going over went over to Olga again? Uh, we need to see how we can. That's now back now. Time. Thank you. And uh, so to the ECOM membership, um, we have uh, new ECOM members in 2019. Clyde from Zimbabwe, Sylvie from France, and Ruel from the Philippines joined us. So we have a regional distribution of the ISTA ECOM. We also tried to do that within the technical committees. And in 2019, at the meeting, colleagues that left us from the executive committee were Joël Le Chappé, who also became uh, our next ISTA Honorary Life member, and Mabel from Zambia and Masatoshi from Japan. And uh, I know they, they all wish us well in this meeting and still participate within ISTA in different activities. Um, it is a shame we couldn't be in Italy because uh, I would have liked to meet up again with Attilio Lovato, our uh, Easter Honorary uh, Life President, who, who I know um, is always following us and, and joining us um, in, in the meetings in the different places to be involved. Easter was started in 1924 with the aim of facilitating international seed trade. It's become internationally recognized and cross-linked with other organizations like OECD, ISF, UPOF, FAO. We have very close links with those and we want to continue to have those close links. What ISTA does, um, you, it develops standard methods and procedures for both sampling and testing, promotes uniform applications of these procedures, for evaluation of seed moving in international trade. Those methods and procedures are well used for domestic seed certification quality control programs and the international seed trade. They can also be used in other areas like grain or phytosanitary testing, and the methods are there available for everybody to use. Um, the end result is often the ISTA certificates uh, that Stefano gave us a very good introduction to for the use within Italy for a range of commodities. The Orange International assures a traceability from sampling to testing in one unique system with a maximum seed lot size. The Blue International doesn't have the maximum seed lot size and also is used specifically for seed, for seed mixtures. Over 200,000 certificates issued globally every year, and the idea is not to move towards an e-certificate system to facilitate trade and keep up to date with the technologies in those areas. Mm -hmm. 
The ISTA strategy 2019 to 2022 was discussed at the meeting in Hyderabad last year and is also published on the website. The strategy forms the framework of what the um, ECOM does, the Secretariat, and delivers to delivery of membership around that strategy because the membership is important in developing that strategy and also developing it. The new ECOM met for the first time um, in July in Hyderabad and then again in Bologna at the full business meeting. And since then we've been meeting as virtual meetings. We've had three already and now we plan to have virtual meetings uh, every, every four weeks. In Hyderabad at the one day meeting, we gave a briefing to the new ECOM members on how the ECOM works and communicates. We made sure that new ECOM members and, and existing ECOM members were assigned to the different ECOM working groups, which is how we achieve the work within the executive committee. And we also set up a technical committee liaison officers to help there with the, the main activity of ISTA through the technical committee members. We also talked about the Congress from 2019 and planned for the Verona meeting and, and made other business decisions. In, in uh, Bologna, we had five days of meetings. Um, prior to the meeting, we also met with um, the ISTA Secretary General, President, myself, uh, Kashavulu as Vice President and Craig as past President, met with FAO, IPPC and ISF in separate meetings. In particular, we, we, were, we had a very good meeting with the Director General of FAO to talk about his hand-in-hand -hand initiatives. When we got to Bologna, we updated the whole executive on our progress in those meetings and then had further budget discussions looking at staffing, membership, audit fees, special projects, website and e-certificates, which Andreas has given you an overview of today. We also looked at how to involve new ESTA members, um, become people come active in ISTA and also involve the designated authorities as much as we could in the decision making. We also were looking at how to promote science within ISTA and we have the 100,000 Swiss franc special project fund, which um, already has one set of projects going through and is looking at the next set now. We continued to look at how we could support new technologies in the ISTA rules and we're going to get an update from that. To, um, update from that. We, with um, Lena later on in the session. We also need to look at uh, a special project that Kashavulu is involved with, Young at ISTA, and also how to expand seed testing into developing countries. In our web-based econ meetings, we've had two hours of meetings uh, at three different um, times leading up to this meeting. First to the web-based meetings, organizing those, making use of the IT tools like Office 365, and also planning for these virtual meetings. The ECOM activity report in this document uh, is also available on the website. And my role here is to give you an overview um, and present on behalf of the working groups which have done all, all the hard work. So thank you to them and the Secretariat as, as I start to give you the presentation. Accreditation working group chaired by Rita Zeccanelli. The highlights there are looking at the support to the accreditation department and review of accreditation standard and other documents as well as ongoing projects about restructuring the audits, looking at interactive certificates and how that will affect the audits, co cooperating with other TCOMs and organizing workshops and training events, um, especially for the technical auditors. Articles and bylaws chaired by Kashavulu. Last year, there were two changes to the ISTA articles where the industry member category was removed and the deadlines for reporting for annual meetings was revised. This year, there are no um, ISTA article changes or proposals to be considered. 
Designated authorities and international relations working group uh, have been merged to, to make the larger group where we've merged both international relations and designated authorities that were separate. Designated authorities are particularly interesting and, and important to ISTA to be involved because it is one country or distinct economy, one vote within the ISTA system. And it's the designated authorities that designate the voting members. So these people and organizations are important to ISTA. We had key meetings uh, with FAO, ISF, IPPC, as I mentioned in February. That's part of the international relationship and uh, building with, with our other partners that are interested in the seed world. Continue collaboration with key ISTA partners and we're looking forward to make new links and attend meetings both virtually and in person as the COVID situation changes. Sorry, just going back to events working group with uh, Berta. And that's particularly important for arranging the annual meetings and looking forward to arranging the meeting and Congress in 2022 in New Zealand and also sorting out and agreeing venues for 2023, 2024, which is the 100 years anniversary of ISTA and 2025. Marketing and Publications is chaired by Ignacio and the highlights there are the electronic handbooks, the ISTA rules in Spanish which is now well established um, and, and part of the official version available online. Videos that are being developed online especially for sampling and, and maybe in the future for others as we look to, to, to develop um, other training tools. We also have an increased presence on social media with the ISTA newsletter, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. The ISTA rule session from the 19th of May is already available on, on, on the YouTube channel as well. Science and Technology Working Group cha chaired by Lena. Um, they've developed a general guideline how to, on how to proceed with the new technology in ISTA laboratories and the document is nearly ready for publication and Lena will give us an update on that shortly. Technical committee is very important part of ISTA chaired by Valerie Cockrell. We've uh, continued to have financial support to the technical committees where they have the autonomy to spend up to 3000 Swiss francs annually to facilitate their technical committee work. 100,000 Swiss francs project and looking at training initiatives. Within this working group we're looking at possibilities for virtual workshops and other virtual training for people and also make use of new technologies within the laboratory as well as within the training and use within the technical committees. Membership fees working group is chaired by Kashavulu and he's going to present to us later um, the recommendation to the memberships. Vegetable Seed Industry Working Group is a joint working group between ISTA and uh, members of the vegetable industry. Vice Chair is Merrill fr from, from the industry and chaired by Berta. There's two ongoing projects. Experiment to look at how to increase the number of sublots of vegetable seeds and the possibility to reduce the weight of working sample for the other seed determinations for fruity crops. The technical, co the technical committees um, of ISTA, as I said, are key to how ISTA managed to, to achieve its workload and output. Tw 20 technical committees and working groups um, with a membership from 270 technologists, scientists, 
uh, analysts around the world. 250 professionals have attended um, annual workshops and those, those are important things that we want to maintain um, and why we're looking to achieve and develop virtual workshops for the future. So as an overview, progress has been made on new key initiatives like new technology, e-certificates project, we're looking at starting that uh, once we get approval and have some more other information about that to, to make sure we can deliver that and communicate via Excel. And we're still maintaining and improving the international rules for seed sampling and testing, which are a key, key product and key importance to ISTA as an association. We're also continuing with and improving the laboratory accreditation situation. And as you can see from this work and others within your own countries, we're trying to adapt to the COVID-19 situation to, to continue to support the global seed trade and help feed the world. At that point, I'd like to um, thank you and uh, hand back over to Andreas. But before I do that, I'd like to acknowledge that the progress is only possible by the hard work, cooperation and dedication of the of the different people within the executive committee working groups, the technical committee chairs, and, and the ISTA secretariat, designated authorities, and from the host organizations and companies. So thank you very much. A hand back to you, Andreas. Thank you very much, Steve. I don't see any, any questions popping up here. Um, if you uh, there were some general questions about ISTA, if you have these general questions, please connect directly to us via ista.office.ista.ch. Thank you very much, or by our website. Um, makes it easier. Um, I would kindly ask now Keshavulu, our vice president, to um, talk about the membership fees. Keshavulu, are you ready? Yes. Okay, you may take over. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Andreas. Hello, everyone. So thank you very much for the opportunity to talk on the ISTA membership fee. The proposed annual membership fee will become effective from 2021. Of course, as we are all aware that the designated authorities are key component of the ISTA organization. No membership fee associated with the designated authorities. Designated authorities have to nominate to designate members. A designated member is a laboratory or a personal member that have been appointed by distinct economy or the country to vote on behalf of their country. The responsibility of the designated authorities to coordinate the member labs to the government, non-government, so including private labs in the country and come together, discuss before coming to the ISTA meeting for the feedback so that the designated member can uh, vote on behalf of the country. The current, the is, oh, could you, could you, could you go back? Yeah. So uh, the current uh, ISTA membership fee, 2020. So if you look at the uh, category wise, the annual membership fee, the member laboratories, sampling entity, the 5,214 Swiss franc. So in addition, an accredited member additional fee is 1,224 Swiss franc. Then another category is the personal member annual fee, and then which is the 1,049 Swiss franc, and who is engaged in, in the science and practice of seed testing who is also uh, uh, supporting the ISTA objectives. Then coming to the final category of the membership, the associate member, 
and then who is not a personal member and then who is also involved in, in the science and practice of seed testing and also supporting the ISTA. Here the membership fee do not include the audit fee payable by member laboratory or the sampling accredited labs and that is not voted on the by the membership but the membership is informed about any changes in audit fee no changes are currently planned if you could recall back the ista undertaken a survey on the membership fee structure in the 2018 and which was presented in 2019 in hyderabad with an objective to look out for the cost of membership and associate benefits and also the members to judge membership fee and benefits then what ista provides besides other things then some of the highlights if you, if you could see the existing members feel that the fee is fair some of the non members feels that the fee are too high and barrier for joining to the ista the coming to the value of the ista the most of the members agreed with the value of ista ista rules international standardized certificates ista handbooks and provision of proficiency test programs members also appreciated with the with what ista provides and then they were also interested in to have more number of workshops trainings and the valuable seed research programs so the determination of ista membership fee is based on cost involved in operation in of the association and then we could see the the secretary general so dr andreas vas presented the 2021 budget estimate the situation the cash flow is not covering the running cost so that means we are in the negative side the situation negative situation and have to take some amount maybe could be a little amount from the reserves so what we are talking from the reserves is not only covering the project cost as mentioned by the andreas but has to cover the running cost of the association when we look this the difference is so small that we can cover from the reserves and can stay with membership fee as they are especially keeping in mind the membership fee are some members are feeling that very high and we would not like to stress budget of these members more than required however we need to keep on this situation in future a possible solution besides revising the fee structure and could be in the coming years to discuss about the early bird discount that is the 10% if you pay the rnr before 31st december then another the as mentioned by the andreas uh, in the budget the covid situation hits also ista budget in some cost are likely not to occur or at later stage this year why other may be higher but we expect that the cash flow is higher than the running cost so this surplus may cover the 2021 budget next please so for the so therefore the based on the current membership development as mentioned by secretary general the number of uh, laboratories are increasing number of accredited labs are also increasing so therefore the exec executive committee 
is proposing that the membership fee remain unchanged and no increase is proposed for the year 2021. If the membership fee are paid on or before 31st December, and then again, the discount continues with the 10% early payment. So that is discount. So with this, so thank Andreas. So if any questions and comments, so welcome. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Keshavulu. Um, I did not see any questions for that coming in. There were questions from workshops coming in. Can workshops be held in their country? Please contact, uh, if you don't, are not an accredited lab, please contact your accredited labs in the countries they can um, work on that. I've got here another question in here. In view of the COVID-19 pandemic, negative economic impacts to the seed industry in particular, any consideration on fee payment deferment cost as a stimulus? Um, we are not planning to reduce the ISTA fees, if that is, uh, is the point, but if there are problems, please contact the ISTA Secretariat. Thank you very much, Keshavulu. Um, Thanks, Andreas. I would, yeah. I would now like to ask Lena to um, give her presentation. Lena, you may go ahead. Thanks. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to give this short presentation on science and technology working group work, what we have been doing since the last meeting. Um, next slide, please. Uh, these are the members of the working group. There were small changes after the new ECOM. So uh, from ECOM, we are from Valerie Cockerell, uh, Sylvie Craig, and Andreas from Secretariat and from the uh, TCOMS, the members that TCOMS propose, they are Bert from Advanced Technologies, David Johnston from Germination, Roaching from Purity and Ernest from, from the Rules Committee. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, the role of technologies in seed sampling and testing is uh, probably increasing. And uh, ISTA rules allow the use of technologies for seed sampling and analysis. And the use of technologies is even encouraged in the ISTA strategy. And there, there are possibilities to develop and apply technologies at every step when ISTA methods are developed, or at least they can be considered. But naturally, the technologies need to be fit, fit for purpose. Technology must be validated through ISTA method validation program. And every laboratory must verify that the technologies they are using is uh, accurate enough. And when these requirements are met, technologies can be used. However, uh, when making uh, decisions uh, or considering what kind of te technologies that is new to the laboratory can be used uh, and when making the decisions it it's not always so easy there are quite many points to be solved uh, and this is the reason why the working group is developing guidance on certain points that can be considered before decisions are made of this new and very often very expensive technologies. And here, when I speak about new technology, I mean uh, also technologies that is new to the laboratory. Uh, in many cases, technology that has been used for years in some laboratory can be 
new to the uh, neighboring laboratory. So we are uh, planning to add guidance to the ISTA website where there are some special questions that are common to all seed laboratories that consider technologies new to the, them. And these questions should be considered at the very first steps of the decision making process. And uh, the next slide, please. And these are some examples what kind of uh, uh, questions should be uh, considered. For example, why use the new technology? Is the purpose to save time? Is it to save labor, save money, or perhaps improve reprodu reproducibility and repeatable repeatability? Or are there health and safety reasons? Uh, the laboratory should also consider to which species and or which analysis the new technology should be used. For example, some technologies may be available for one for certain types of species, but it is not perhaps so good for, for example, small seeded species. Uh, the next slide, please. And the laboratory should also consider when uh, who, who trains the machine and the operator. Is it the man manufacturer? Is it laboratory? Who is uh, supposed to train the machine or operator? Or are there database available from, from a user group with agreed methodology and rules for artificial intelligence type of technology? Or are there some other means? Also, maintenance, of course, need to be uh, considered beforehand. How it is arranged? How much does it cost? How, how often it is needed? Are maintenance contracts offered by the supplier? What is the replacement period? Uh, these are very uh, critical points that should be taken into account. And of course, the role of TCOMs is very crucial for the laboratories. This is the normal work that TCOMs are already doing. And perhaps, and TCOMs can, for example, provide, exam, provide guidance and information on technologies, but usually or normally they should not advise on a specific piece of equipment. TCOMs give advice on how technologies new to the laboratory can be applied and how to verify these technologies, how to verify that these technologies work uh, accurately. For example, Balkan Sampling Committee has some guidance in the ISTA website how to verify the working quality of automatic seed samplers. TCOMs carry out projects concerning technologies and of course they make rule proposals but the new proposal is also that the um, TCOMs could make some kind of user groups for certain technologies. Uh, it might be useful, useful to have user groups so that the laboratories would be able to exchange experience and, labor and laboratories that are not familiar with the te technology could discuss with each other. There may be cases where TCOM members are not familiar with technology or do not have pra practical experience on certain type of technolo technology for this purpose. Uh, this kind of group, uh, user groups may, might be useful. But I still like to emphasize the roles of uh, Advanced Technology Committee and Seed Science Advisory Group. They, they have their special roles in these technology questions and the work we are presenting here is not overlapping with their roles.
So this was very shortly what I, I wanted to tell you. Thank you. Thank you, Lina. That was a very nice overview about uh, the work of the um, new technology working group. And I would like now, don't see questions for that. There was a different question also coming from, from the fee structure. Uh, so let me, I think that was, was all. I answered that uh, directly. Uh, Michael Kruse has a question here. Maybe you can come back to Delina. The general guidance document circulated to TCOMS contains the sentence, the verification method must require peer review or peer recognition. What does it mean in practice? Thank you for your presentation, Michael. Or explanation, sorry. Could you comment on that? Uh, uh, is it possible that I would come back to Michael later? Yes, of course. Yep. Michael, I hope that is fine for you. Now I would like then to ask um, Ernest to present the proposed rule changes. Ernest, I see you are Stefano Conti, so you, so you, um, so you so Stefano changed a little bit and went over to the US. But I think you only took his place in the panel list. And the floor is yours. Uh, I will open your microphone. Now we can hear you. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Or to, quote, so or or to quote American president, yes, we can. There you go. Can you see my screen? Yes. Great. All right. I want to thank everyone for joining today. Uh, uh, I am Ernest Allen, I assure you, not Stefano. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started with these proposals uh, because we are um, look like we're running kind of short on time. Uh, ISTA's primary mission is to develop, maintain, and promote standardized testing procedures for seat testing internationally. ISTA relies on its members with subject matter expertise to work in one of its more than 20 specialized committees. These committees are led by chairs dedicated to ensuring that their relevant chapters within the ISTA rules are maintained using the most current and applicable scientific knowledge available. Now, I know from experience that leading a group of volunteer members whom are each experts in their home countries is no easy task. Yet, year after year, technical committee chairs are able to pull together, the, pull together these experts uh, to develop rules that make it easier for, for the global sea trade uh, to occur internationally. So, before I get started, I want to thank the technical committee chairs, TCOM members, the ISTA Secretariat, and all other stakeholders that work with us to facilitate our work in publishing the ISTA rules. This year, the Rules Committee is submitting to the membership 10 editorial changes and 16 rule change proposals. Since this year's meeting is virtual, we requested that you, the membership, submit your comments to us prior to last Tuesday's meeting so that we could discuss them during the presentation, uh, which we did. Uh, while several issues were resolved during the meeting, a few comments required the chairs to discuss uh, comments with um, the comments with their committees um, after the presentation. The chairs have since submitted to me and the secretary their final proposals. Those changes are in the document that we will review today and are now current on the ISTA website. Uh, while we're going through this, I will point out any changes uh, made that may have occurred after Tuesday's meeting so that voting delegates and their constituents can make informed decisions during voting. Uh, proposals that are approved by vote will be incorporated into the International Rules for Seat Testing 2021 edition. Uh, this edition will be effective and published 
on the ISTA website 1 January 2021. Since there are no changes to the editorial section, I will give a, give a brief summary of the proposals, followed by a few seconds uh, of me scrolling through the proposal for you to view them before moving on. And without any further delay, I will move on to the rules proposals. The first editorial change is the inclusion of a safety and health statement in the introduction of the ISTA rules. The ECOM decided to include this uh, maybe a year or two ago and is um, getting into 2021. And it is in green on the screen. This has not changed since uh, the presentation last Tuesday. Moving on to the next proposal, these changes were approved at OGM 16, but, but were not incorporated into the rules. So we're doing that uh, for the 2021 rules. Historically, examples used throughout the chapters did not have, uh, did not display authority abbreviations, and authority abbreviations are not required on the ISTA Orange Certificate or the Blue International Certificate. Uh, due to the stabilized list updates last year, all names throughout the chapters were updated, including the examples. This editorial change will revert those examples which were changed in error back to their original format. These changes, uh, 1.5.2, Point 21, genetically modified organism, organisms. Uh, these changes were approved during OGM 18, but were not updated in the rules, so we are including them in this edition. Uh, table 2C part 1. Uh, these changes were um, are, are required as a result of the approved uh, nomenclature changes to the stabilized list uh, that have been incorporated into uh, table 2C. Uh, you'll see the uh, current version version as well as the uh, proposed version as I scroll through. Two point eight changes required as a result of nomenclature changes to ISTA stabilized list that have been incorporated into Table Two C. Also, four point two point one definitions. These changes were approved during OGM 18, but, but were not updated uh, in the rules. So we are updating those in this edition.
5.8.2, rounding results. This editorial change is due to erroneous cross-reference references in chapters 1 and 15. C.7, clarifying instructions for preparing hypochlorite solutions for pretreatment as prescribed in the methods and adding the use of hypochlorite solutions for methods similar to those already approved in the rules. Uh, this proposal was um, submitted and supported by the Seat Health Committee. Again, I'm going to go through this um, pretty fast because there were no changes from our previous meeting to this proposal. Eight point five procedures. This editorial change is required due to incorrect cross references in four sections within Chapter Eight, and you can see those four changes on screen now. And this is the last uh, proposal within the editorial changes. Uh, as a reminder. Uh, once we, during your vote, if you accept these editorial changes, uh, you will accept all of the editorial changes that I just went through in one vote. Part B, new species and changes to species names, uh, none this year. And the ISTA stabilized list, uh, the next revision for the ISTA stabilized list will be considered at the 2025 ISTA annual meeting. Chapter three, the purity analysis. C.3.1, revision of Table 3A. The Purity Committee wet, met with the um, owner of several varieties that are no longer being traded, and as a result of these discussions, the committee decided to delete several names from Table 3A, and these names can be viewed here. Chapter four, determination of other seeds by number, C.4.1, complete tests. Uh, this proposal seeks to harmonize uh, this section with other sections within the rules dealing with dust-like seeds. The addition of indistingu indistinguishable seeds is new and was added because ind indistinguishable species are not reliably retrieved in the complete test quantity. This proposal was approved by a majority by majority vote in the purity committee. There were no changes uh, to this proposal uh, since Tuesday's meeting. C.4.1, 
C.4.2, reduced test. Um, this proposal harmonizes with recent updates regarding dust-like seeds and small seed lots in other sections. This proposal was agreed to by majority vote um, in the purity committee. Uh, this proposal received several comments during Tuesday meeting, Tuesday's meeting. Uh, the purity committee decided to remove two requirements related to standardized uh, minimum working sizes. Uh, this effectively made this proposal uh, an editorial change. There was an additional comment that I did not get to read on uh, Tuesday. It was from Canada in support of the principle that there should be a standardized minimum working weight or number for small seed lots uh, or expensive seed lots that would encourage purity and other interested TCOMs to, con and they encourage purity, the purity committee and other interested TCOMs to continue work on this proposal. So that comment was in support of this uh, proposal. Chapter five, the germination test, C.5.1, germination method for Brassica napus. A validation study was conducted on Brassica napus to determine what temperature requirements for germination promoted higher normal seedling development and enhanced testing reproducibility among labs. Uh, this proposal was supported by the germination committee. We also received uh, several comments on this proposal. Um, after discussion, uh, the germination decided not to modify this proposal, so it has not been changed since uh, Tuesday's uh, last Tuesday's discussions. C.5.2, precision of light for germination tests. Uh, this proposal is to make clear that, uh, clear that in the germination chapter, that LED lights can be used for germination. This proposal is supported by the germination committee. This proposal was modified during Tuesday's meeting where a sentence um, uh, included in the original proposal was removed uh, regard, and that sentence was regarding the visible light spectrum range. Again, it was removed after uh, it was discussed in last Tuesday's meeting. C.5.3, uh, reporting results. This proposal was submitted to the germination committee by the ISTA accreditation department. Uh, it is to make clear that only, germ only the percentage germination is reported when the germination test is terminated due to a predetermined germination level. If approved, a consequential change is required in 1.5.2.6, and this proposal is some supported by the germination committee. I have not, I did not receive any additional change uh, since uh, the last uh, discussion on this Tuesday.
C.5.4 change in the germination evaluation of roots for Helianthus annuus to allow secondary roots. Uh, a validation study was carried out in the germination committee to change the evaluation of roots for Helianthus annuus to allow secondary roots when the primary root is defective. This proposed list is supported by a validation study and is approved by the germination committee. Uh, I did not receive any uh, changes from the germination committee on this proposal. Chapter seven, seed health testing. C.7.1, sample and subsample size. Uh, this proposed change will increase harmonization for sample and subsample size uh, throughout the chapter. There was uh, several comments on this um, during uh, Tuesday's meeting. Um, the sample size was reduced um, from 1,000 seats to 4, 400 seats in the proposal. The, uh, the committee decided to leave it at 400 seats in 7-004. You can see that here. Uh, the minimum uh, recommended sample size is 1,000 seats on the on the left of the screen, and uh, it was modified to say the minimum sample size is 400 seats. Uh, it's important that uh, we, um, I think the the seat health committee wanted to remind everyone that. This is a minimum sample size. Um, if people are doing 1,000 seats and they want to continue doing 1,000 seats, they are able to do that. This is just a minimum uh, sample size change. The green coloring you see on the right hand side of your screen uh, is a change that was made um, after uh, the proposals were originally um, uh, uh, sent to the membership uh, two months ago. And it was for clarification. Again, this is a lot of information that I am scrolling through um, pretty fast, but um, none of I am stopping on anything that may have changed since the last time uh, these proposals were um, discussed by us on Tuesday. So everything that I'm passing by is exactly the same as it was.
and that is all the changes for that proposal. Moving on to um, C.7.2, identification criteria. Um, uh, this proposal was dealing with identi identification criteria for several species uh, within uh, 7.7-007. Um, uh, no additional changes were made to this proposal since the last time we reviewed it uh, on Tuesday. Um, C.7.3, safety precautions. Uh, this proposal makes clear that alternative chemicals other than ethidium bromide may be used for this method. It's also, it also provides additional safety considerations uh, for, using, um, for people to consider when using ethidium bromide. Um, this proposal is, is supported uh, by the Seat Health Committee, and no changes have been made to this proposal since our last discussion. There was during the discussion a, um, a comment on uh, the safety issue uh, involving um, uh, safety requirements involving UV light. Uh, at the time, the person that made the comment may not have seen that there was a statement included by the Seat Health Committee uh, in this proposal, and it is in the center of your screen here. Chapter nine, determination of moisture com uh, content. C.9.1, changes to the use of must, should, and may. Uh, the moisture committee has reviewed this chapter and is recommending that some of the wording be changed to improve clarity on when a laboratory must perform an action and where it is suggested that the laboratory should perform the action. Uh, this proposal is approved by the moisture committee. Uh, there have been changes uh, to this proposal in uh, 9.3.5.7 and So in 9.2.5.7, originally this was, um, was was this must was a should. Uh, the committee decided to change it back to must in 9.2.5.7. The same thing uh, in 9.3.1.4 under grinder. Uh, originally this was a should. The committee decided to change it to a must. Uh, to, to let it remain must in the chapter. This change was made uh, and discussed last Tuesday.
and that concludes the changes for for um, for C point nine point one. C point nine point two uh, containers for moisture testing in chapter nine. Uh, the moisture uh, the moisture um, TCOM has been reviewing the wording in chapter nine of the ISTA rules. The committee would like to clarify the definition of appropriate containers for use in oven moisture testing. There have been no changes to this proposal. C.9.3, the use of mesh instead of meshes. The committee feels that in the instance below, the use of meshes is incorrect as it implies multiples of mesh and would prefer the, to use a singular mesh to describe, to describe sieves. And there have been no changes since this proposal was first submitted. C.9.4, clarification of working sample. Section 9.2.5.2 of the rules causes confusion as there are differences in how many working samples are drawn depending on whether the seeds are ground or whole. This section has been reordered and changed to improve clarity. There have been no changes to this proposal since it was first submitted to the membership. There was a comment about um, the deletion of this information at the at the top. Uh, the information is still in the in the proposed version. It's just scattered throughout so that it is um, so that it reads a little more um, so this is a little more clear. C.9.5, moisture method for Corica papaya. Uh, this uh, moisture method is proposed for inclusion into the ISTA rules by the moisture committee. And you can see the, the proposal, the new entry um, on screen. There have been no changes to this proposal uh, since it was first submitted to membership. And the final proposal, uh, chapter 15, uh, seat vigor testing, uh, C.15.1, clarification of the assessment of the radical emergence uh, for Zia maize and Triticum astevum, subspecies astevum, in the radical emergence test. Uh, this proposal has three aims to clarify the assessment of a two millimeter radical to be consistent and to be consistent in the description of the germination media for the radical emergence test for zea maize and triticum astevum, subspecies, subspecies astevum, to express uh, all Latin names according to the stabilized list. Um, all the validation uh, for this radical emergence test has been done without any magnification and has achieved repeat repeatability and reproducibility. Thus, the committee does not see the need for magnification. To allow magnification, the level of magnification that should be used would have to be specified. Thus, will require further investigation to determine whether 
the results remain repeatable and reproducible. The authority name was removed from Triticum astivum, um, subspecies astivum, for consistency. And this is how the proposed version will look in the rules. There was a, a, a change to the um, to the take uh, not a change um, in the original proposal. Uh, in addition to the to the table title that says all assessments of the radical emergence uh, should be made by eye and without magnification. Again, um, the committee uh, explained that uh, if you would like to use magnification or put that in the extra rules, then additional uh, studies would need to be done uh, on uh, and a specific magnification would need to be chosen. Uh, for that. So this is a by eye method. And this concludes the uh, our review of the ISTA rules proposals. Again, I went through them um, at a at a um, at, at a good rate, um, because we've, all, we've already reviewed a lot of these, uh, there were no changes for a lot of them. I, I'm pretty sure I caught all of the changes that were made since last Tuesday's vote. So, um, Andreas, uh, next will explain um, the voting process and how that's going to take place. Thank you. Thank you, Ernest. Um, just one point from from my side. If you want to follow up. Steve mentioned that before the session on uh, May 19, you can do that on the ESTA YouTube channel and can see all the um, and listen to all the discussions which were happening there. I would like to guide especially the voting uh, designated members um, through the voting sheet they received together with an email. Um, you see parts of this voting sheet um, on the screen now. Uh, we kindly ask you to fill the voting sheet. You can do that electronically and put in your name as a voting delegate the country you are entitled to vote for. And then you click on the yeses, noes or abstains. Um, we had to include the abstains. We are not normally doing that um, because we have the cards or the, the, the nice um, tools where you can vote yes or no or do not do anything. But uh, as this is a kind of electronic uh, uh, sheet, if you click yes, you only have to, by accident, you only have the possibility to click no in instead. Um, so um, we put in the abstain if you um, don't want to vote. You, if you don't click anything here, it's also uh, an abstain. Um, on the end of the list, you should sign and date it. Date can also be filled in automatically or on online here. And you should sign it and return the scanned copy to the secretariat. Please uh, use the email um, you received the voting sheets on uh, and send it back to ista.office at ista.ch. It should be or needs to be with the secretariat by June 5, 2020, 7 o'clock in the evening Switzerland time. So please send it back on time so your voting can count. We will inform you on the process, on the outcome of process and the acceptance or non-acceptance of um, your voting or the votings uh, by email and by uh, social media and our other possibilities like newsletter.
that is um, all from my side. I thank all the participants who, who were here. There's another question coming up, maybe related to this. Uh, the question was coming now, only we need to vote, please. Yeah, okay. Uh, the, the voting is only for the voting delegates uh, who are entitled to vote by their governments. Um, I would like now to ask Steve as the president for his closing remarks. And uh, he's probably closing then this um, virtual meeting. Thank you, Andreas. Uh, and, and if you can ad advance the slide for me, that, that would help to go on to the next slide then. So uh, very much like to thank everyone that's joined us today online. We, we had a very good rehearsal the other day where everything went to time. Uh, and we didn't have any hiccups. Uh, and now we do it for real. We're, we're running about 30 minutes over and we had a few hiccups, but you only le learn via doing it for real. So um, I'm, I'm very much appreciate to Olga and Andreas, for our, which I know is everything that's going on in the background to make, make this uh, meeting happen. And I particularly like to focus on the good cooperation and teamwork within ISTA as an association, within the technical committees, the chairs, the members, executive committee, ISTA secretariat, designated authority, um, other organizations we link in with and support from their host organization and companies. It's only because of that support, mainly the, uh, most of the work is voluntary from those organizations and it is very much appreciated by the SEED community to allow us to progress. So thank you to all um, and everyone from myself and, and the ECOM. Um, next slide. Um, I want to remind you to submit your voting documents. As Andreas said, it's only the designated voting members from their countries or distinct economies that, that can vote and they need to return those forms to um, Secretariat by the uh, 5th of June. Next slide. I want to remind people that there has been a date change for the ISTA Congress in 2022. It's now to, uh, the Congress will be from the 4th to the 10th of May. And that includes a seat symposium, annual meeting and OGM. That will be held in Christchurch, New Zealand at the Tape Christchurch Convention Center, which is uh, currently under construction. The, 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 um, if you go to the website of the Tape organization, it will talk about it being a welcoming place where we can meet people and certainly enjoy Congress 2022 in, in an agricultural area in New Zealand. Next slide, please. And so really the next thing uh, as, as I close or bring the meeting to a close is, is to thank everybody again, especially the presenters today, um, Rita, Lena, Stefano uh, especially, um, Kashavulu, Andreas for organizing everything and especially Ernest who did a terrific job there. Um, and, I, and, I, and I know there's been a lot of work in the background also from Sue Alvarez as, as Vice Chair of the Rules. So it's much appreciated from everybody today in, involved in the presentations. So thank you, thank you all. Um, hope to see you at uh, the next ISTA meeting in 2021, which is in Cairo, Egypt. And now I officially close this first virtual meeting of the, of the membership in preparation for the OGM. Thank you very much to everybody. And uh, Andreas, I can hand back to you. I think you're on mute, Andreas. I'm on mute, yeah. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, I can only say thank you as well. Um, there are some questions coming in. Um, great meeting, that's, uh, that's nice. Thank you very much.
Uh, the results of the votes, so the, the question I said, will be published on the social media and um, and by newsletter to you. Uh, so you will have the results and uh, um, then uh, can see what will be the changes for the rules 2021. So of course, very interesting. Yes, you will get this information. So, so that's um, just answering the, the last questions which are coming in here. Uh, a few of them I answered directly uh, in writing. Um, that was um, was easy in a few cases. Thank you very much also from our side and thank you to all of the support of the Secretariat, especially Olga, who was doing a tremendously good job in the background. So thank you very much to, to all, of, all of you. We wish you um, to stay safe and hope to see you again in the future. So thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye and stay healthy.